Hello friends, how are you today? Welcome back to my channel, you guys, and welcome if it's your first time here. My name is Sunny, and I love to go thrifting, and I love DIYs, and today's a DIY project. I'm going to be attempting a crochet cardigan that I've been seeing all around my Pinterest. I really want to attempt one, and I will be doing kind of like a little tutorial, so if you guys want to try it too, you're more than welcome. The cardigan that I'm doing today is not actually for me, it's for my partner. He really really wanted a handmade piece from me and actually like I couldn't be more happier that someone wants to wear one of my pieces so of course I was going to make him one. The cardigan that I'm going to be attempting is the hexagon cardigan which I haven't done yet but I think it's pretty simple I think. When I say it's simple it's because I don't have to be like following a pattern like three rows this uh, the second five rows this other thing because that's when I get like super distracted so I really wanted like an easy project I know it's going to take a long time I've seen other videos on TikTok and people are like spending maybe like 30 hours to do it but I'm not in a hurry I think it's like a easy project to do while you're watching movies or listening to a podcast I'm going to post here some ideas of what I'm aiming towards. I have selected already two colors which I'm going to do the cardigan with. I've bought the yarn in Linkraft but this is like 100% cotton yarn so it's very easy to find and I will be doing it in these two colors. The primary color is going to be this natural is called. It's actually like a top or very dark beige. It's 50 grams and it's a eight ply cotton and I'm going to be using it says here needle of four millimeters but I'm actually going to be using the 4.5 so there's a bit more like the gaps between the between the stitches are like bigger I don't know if it makes sense but yeah and the other color that I'm going to be using his favorite color is green so of course I had to include some green in it and it's the color hedge green it's like a washed out green so I think these two together will match perfectly what else am I using in this project of course the needle as I told you before I'm using a 4.5 hook I don't know why I keep saying needle when it's a hook so yeah the hook 4.5 i'm also going to be using some handy little scissors to cut the threads and also some yarn and needle for when we finish just to like close it all as i told you before this is the hexagon cardigan what you actually do is like a huge granny square but instead of being a square it has six sides so it's a hexagon so i will have to do two hexagon one from the right side and one for the left side it will be exactly the same and once i finish it and i join it you join it through like the shoulders and then you join them together at the back and once i had that finish i would love to add a color don't know how to do it but i will learn this is going to be like the fun part i think and i will also like to add some buttons which I haven't bought yet because I don't know when the cardigan is finished which ones would I like and how many would I need so that one I haven't bought it yet I do have all the yarn here I really want to do it like very oversized so it's comfortable and he can wear it on top of other things so I think that's all that I wanted to tell you hope this project won't tell won't take me more than a week but i don't know how long it's going to tell take me if you do it with a bigger yarn of course it was it's going to take you less time but i think this one is going to be perfect i've made some other cardigans with this cotton and i really like it because being 100 percent cotton it's very comfortable you can wear it all year round i wear my cardigans in summer or in winter i pop them on top of like maybe like a thin jumper the primary color is going to be these natural ones so i'm going to start with this one and i've seen that what you have to do is the same stitches as a granny square gonna start with a magic knot i think i'm gonna show you guys how i do it so let's start with the magic knot so 
I take the thread, loop it around like this. With the hook like this, I just insert it here and grab it. And that's it. We have the first magic knot. Now what we're going to do is chain four. So one, two, three, four. And now once we have four, we're going to close the loop. So we go to the first stitch and we do a slip knot. So we take it here and we slip knot. So now um, it's not very clear, but we actually have like a little loop here. And what we're going to do is stitch the double crochets we're going to stitch them around this loop. And what we're going to do is stitch six groups or th of three double crochets. So for starting, the first one is going to be three chains. One, two, and three. We do this so we can go up. And now we do two double crochets. Loop insert, take the thread, insert again, take thread again, loop through the first three, take and out. This is one, okay? And now we do the other one. The same one, and two. So we have here our first group. We have to do another six for the hexagon. So between the groups of stitches of double crochets, we do a chain. We chain one. So we chain one. And now we do another group. And this is going to be three double crochets. So one. Two, and three. So as you see, we have two groups here and we chain one. This is like doing a, a granny square, okay? One, two, three. One, two, three, and chain. One, two, and three. And we chain. So now we have four. If we wanted to do a granny square, this is where we would close and start doing the granny square from here. But because we want a hexagon, we need two more groups of three double crochets. So now you guys, we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now we do a chain and we go to the third stitch here that we did the first chain at the beginning and we do a slip knot so from here we have six sides so we will need to do in each chain that we've done we need to do two groups of three double crochets each so we're going to chain three we always start the round by chaining three one two and three and now we do two double crochets because this will be the first one one and two and now we need another group in the same place so now we chain one 
And in the same spot, we do another group of three double crochets. Okay, so now we have the two groups here. We're going to jump to the other side. So we will do one chain and now we'll go to the other side. So you have here the three stitches and the chain here. So here is where we have to do the new stitches. So one, two, and three. We chain one, and in the same stitch, we need to do other three. All right, so we have to continue doing the whole round, okay? So we will have six groups of these double stitches. And once we finish that, we will have to, we will have to continue doing row and row and row, and that will be growing and growing. Alright you guys, this is what I've done, this was like one hour maybe, I've been in silent for one hour, I cannot even, <laughs> I've been super concentrated and doing it super fast. I've done already 10 rows, let me count them, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10 rows. And I've decided I want to change the color. I don't know if I explained to you before. We only do the double um, group of stitches in the corners. So we have six corners here. And in the other ones, we just do a simple group of three double stitches. And this is what we're working with. So to know if the project is like okay or not. We get two sides like this. You can see a bit of the shape. This is a tiny one. This is for a baby or a doll. So as you can see, this is going to be like the shoulder or this is going to be like the shoulder. This is the armpit, this is the sleeve and the body. As we do more and more, this will be like growing and growing and growing. So as you can see, we have this. We have nothing yet, but I'm going to change now the color of the yarn. I've done 10 rows of the natural color and I'm thinking of maybe doing five rows of the green and then again five rows of the natural and then again of the green. I'm gonna see how we go. I'm now going to do five rows of the green color. And how do we add another color that's really simple? Let me show you how I add a new color. So I actually get where we just cut the string now so I can um, stitch on top of this so I can cover it. And what I'm going to do is put my hook under here and I'm going to do a magic knot as we did at the beginning with the new color. Grab it like this so this is secure here at the back of your work. We don't do it too tight though. Now I have my magic stitch here to start. 
So now we chain three. One, two, three, as we were doing all the time. And now we do two double stitches. And I always get all the yarn there so I can be like covering it. All right, so we have the first one. Now we chain one and we go to the next next uh, space that we have here. All right, and now we do three like we were doing. So we yarn over, insert the hook, yarn over again, pass through these two loops and yarn over and now through these two i'll do it again yarn over insert the hook yarn over and now yarn over insert through these two loops yarn over these two other loops and now we chain one don't worry about this yarn that is left here because this is the yarn that we will thread with the needle so as you can see, we started the green color and now we have to do five rows, I'd say, I think. Five um, yeah, rows or rounds or whatever you want to call it. So I'm just going to keep on working on that, you guys. Hope it's clear the change of color. to give you an update of how I'm going with my cardigan that I just started crocheting and I forgot that I was filming so I've been crocheting I took it the other day like on my commute and so on so I've been crocheting a lot and this is what I have I did the 10 first rows of the natural color I started doing the green rows guys here's another project that I'm doing I'm like handling different projects at the same time because I cannot do only one. There's several going on. I did five rows of the green one. Then I did another five rows of the natural. I'm going to do five rows also of the green and I will finish with two rows of the natural. So then when I have the two parts, it will be a total of four rows on the natural and that's where I will join the two parts of the cardigan. So the right and the left. And this is where we are at. I'm already on row three. Let's continue. Let's do an update of this cardigan. I actually finished it, you guys. I finished it. My partner wore it. It was super cool, but I have to tell you that I didn't film the rest of the process and I'm going to tell you why I didn't have time. He wanted to wear it for a special day that we had. I just worked on it during night and at night, you know that the filming is not good. He just Wore it. I will show you here some pictures. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do now. The end result was super cool. It was very like oversized can of cardigan, but it's not something like he would be wearing like on a daily basis. So I decided to undo it because the arms were too, too big like they were massive they were very cool but i know he's not going to wear it if i don't 
fix it. So what I did was to undo the two sides. I have here a lot of yarn that I have undone from this cardigan and I'm going to show you now what I have. I don't know why I did it so big. I just wanted it to be longer but I didn't really think that the longer that I did it the bigger the armholes were going to be. So yeah I didn't think that quite enough. <laughs> when I was filming in my last clip, I think I was about to start the third row of the green here. I'm already on row three. Yeah, let's continue. I should have stopped there, but I continue. I sewed on the buttons and even the color and I didn't get to film it. So that is what I'm going to be doing with you guys. So you can follow along. So I have this size here. I tried it on him and I think it's going to be perfect. And I think the length is going to be okay also. And I have here the other side. So the two sides here. Oh my gosh, this cardigan is going to be like my biggest project because I keep like undoing it, undoing it. These are the two sides. And what I'm going to be doing right now with you guys, I'm going to be getting the green yarn here and I'm going to attach the two sides from the back, like in the middle part, the cardigan, so we can join the two sides together. So let's do that. To attach the two parts together, I'm just going to be using a simple slip knot, I think it's called. I'm super bad for the names so, of the knots. It's the same knot that I did when I did the balaclava and I had to join all the granny squares. So I will pop it up here so you guys can check it out or up here, I think it is, up here. So let's start putting the two sides together. Just to let you know that there is probably a better tutorial out there than the one that I'm going to do right now. I just put the two sides together. This is going to be the back of the cardigan. I put them together just so that I don't get confused and we're going to go that way. So we're going to go up. And I start with a magic knot. So I start with the knot like this, okay? But I'm going to put it inside of the cardigan. So what we're going to do, if you see from doing our knots, like the granny square knot, we have these V's here in the side, on the two sides. So it's a V here and a V upside down on the other side. So we're going to be taking thread from this side and from this side so we can join them. We're going to start with the corner here and the corner is going to be this one here. So I take from this side and from this other side. Okay, so we have them both together and I'm going to put the magic knot that I did at the beginning and these I'm going to pass through these two knots. And I will do secure it just like this, another knot. And now we go to the next one. The beginning is a bit complicated, but once you start, it's easier. This thread is going to go like in the middle. We get this side and this side. And we get the thread that it's like in the middle of the project. And we just do a slip knot. Now we take the next one. So it's this side and this side. Now the thread and we pull it through the three loops. As I told you at the beginning, it's a bit more complicated until you get a hang of it. So we get this side and this side and now we pull through the three loops. And again, this side and this side and through the three loops. So as you can see, joining the two parts. There are many ways to joining the two parts, but I really like um, how this one turns out. It looks very clean when you finish the project.
I just finished attaching the two parts as you can see here it's all perfect with this stitching here very neat what I'm going to do now is do a simple stitch all around the perimeter of the cardigan so it's going to be neater and also if you want to add something else so for example I'm going to be adding a color oh actually no I don't need to I know what I need to do now I'm so stupid before I do the perimeter around the um, around the jacket what I need to do is actually attach the sleeves I don't know what I was thinking about. What I need to do now is following the same stitching that I was doing before. Oh my gosh, my brain. I need to attach, like close the sleeve, you know? This is going to be the sleeve. So I need to do the same stitching that I was doing at the back. I need to do it here. And I will leave only, this is the middle of the back, okay? This is the inside of the back. I will stitch along here until here. I will leave like three of these granny squares without closing it so that will be like our color so it will like open yeah that's going to be my next step hey ya uh, sorry my yeah my face I'm not doing makeup today this is me <laughs> this is me all natural have my glasses on because I'm watching a what do you call this like a documentary or like a yeah it's just like a Netflix murder or kidnap series that I like to watch while I'm crocheting and I'm going to give you guys an update of what I've been doing till now so I managed to finish the whole perimeter of the cardigan. I just did it with a single crochet stitch all around the border of the cardigan. Let me try it on so you guys can see it. It's a bit big on me but it's not for me. This is it. And I also did the single crochet stitching around the armhole, well, not the armhole, the sleeve, the hem of the sleeve. And now what I'm going to be doing is the color and the color is actually pretty simple i thought before doing it that i had to do some kind of like v shape or something like for the edges i don't know in my mind i didn't know i had to do it like just this simple rectangle and because i want the cardigan to overlap a little bit because we will be adding some buttons so what i'm going to do is start the color instead of start it right in the edge what i'll do will be to start it just here so I would leave one of these group of stitches without the color and I will just start it here last time I did 10 rows of single crochet stitching I think this time I'm going to keep it like that I'll do 10 and then I'll put it on and see if it looks okay or not the only thing that I need to decide is whether to do the color in green or in the natural beige color that I have here. The other time I did it in beige because I finished all the stitching and the color that I finished it was the beige or the natural color. I just did the color in the same color. Yeah. And now because all the edges of the cardigan are green, I think it will look better in the green. But I don't really know if I want to do it like this or not. And I'm still deciding. Like I was just doing the sleeves and the cardigan and I was like, okay, what should I do? What should I do? What should I do? But I think the green would look okay. And I have enough yarn also to continue doing it with the green. So yeah, let's start with this guys. Okay, I'm gonna show you, maybe I'll take this better. I'm gonna show you what I do when I'm about to finish the line. As you see, I've done here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I've got eight. So what I do to turn it around, I first chain one and then I'll turn my project around and then I start in the first one. It will be a single stitch. 
and that's it and what I do sometimes if I'm not really concentrated I don't know maybe I will make a mistake what I do is put this little helper here this is my assistant I just put it through the stitch so I know this will be where I finish when I get to this end and then I'll just continue as it is all right let's continue The cardigan is finished. Let me show you. This is the final cardigan. I have to tell you, this has been a challenge. It hasn't been difficult to accomplish. It's just that because I started it like back in September and I did a final design, but it wasn't something that he was going to wear more because it was like just too big for him. So I redid it and this is it you guys. I'm so so happy. Now it's the perfect size for him. I added some buttons that I will show you. These are the buttons. I just love them. They have like this vintage look to them. They're so cute. Also what I did that I don't know why I don't do it with my crochet or knitting pieces and I have to get used to do it because the end result is much better and that's blocking. It was my first time blocking. I actually got myself some neat blockers that I didn't have. I got the rainbow ones. And then I got also like a puzzle mat that they sell for children. It was just like the cheapest one that I could find. I got these neat blockers from Maurice and & Sons. And you guys, the result of the knitted piece once you block it is way better. I think it fits better. It has also like a more structured body. I think we should always block our pieces. I will start doing it from now on. And when you don't block it, like the piece looks more slouchy, I will say. And once you block it, it looks actually like more professional or yeah, it has a better finish, I think. The process of knit blocking is quite straightforward. It's just that you need time for the garment to dry. That takes forever. Also depends on the thickness of your yarn you used. Also on the conditions outside. I make sure that we had a no rainy days, extra like warmth so that the garment could dry easily. What I did was I washed the garment with just a little bit of very soft detergent um, for delicate like garment pieces. I washed it then I try to squeeze it just a little bit but not like turn it and twist it and all that no I only like gently squeeze it so I could get some of the water out and then what I did was extended the garment on a towel what I did with this towel was to roll it nice and gentle and I pressed so that the water it wasn't dripping but at least like to get as much of humidity out of the garment I also step on top of it just a little bit. What I did then was extend the garment at the actual size that I wanted and the shape that I want the garment to have in the end result. I used my knit blockers to block the garment just like all the edges also the part here of the, the connection of the body of the garment with the sleeve. I make sure that all that was very straight so that I did it at night so I put it just in my living room in the floor of my living room and then the next day that it was a very good weather outside and it was pretty sunny what I did was put it in the clothes rack I just extended there and because it was very sunny and the sun here in Australia is so so strong so what I did was put an umbrella that I have I just put it on top so that the umbrella will give a little bit of shade to the cardigan it took like a couple of days to dry completely but it didn't smell like humidity you know when sometimes like it's super humid outside and you put something wet and it's like ugh, it smells it didn't and as I told you I will block from now on everything that I make because it really makes a difference in your end result 
This was my first attempt in a hexagon crochet cardigan and I think I'm going to be making more. My partner is super happy with this piece. I always tell him like every time I wear something that I made myself, I'm always like so proud of wearing it and I'm always telling like, oh, there's nothing better than wearing something you make yourself. Now he gets to wear a piece made by me, tailored for him. He's just so happy to be able to wear a piece like this one. Actually my brother-in-law also asked me for one so I will be making a few more I think. Yeah you guys this is the final result. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Many videos coming very soon. I know I have been a bit missing here on YouTube but I have been organizing everything. Yeah I have some couple of videos coming your way. This year I'm planning to make more and more handmade garments. Yeah, I'm just so excited. I will be sewing, knitting, crocheting, everything, everything that I can do actually. Hope you have liked this video. If you have, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and also don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. I would really appreciate it and see you guys in the next one. Bye!